Welcome to Social Dynamics. I'm super excited that you are here. Our very first guest today is going to be Adriana Dale. And Adriana, thank you so much in your busy schedule for fitting time in for this interview because I know that it's going to be power packed. I have been listening to, I've been reading your ebook and know that what you are going to be sharing with us, I have goosebumps just talking about it, is going to be so impactful and life changing for so many different people. The topic that we're going to talk about today is going to be money. And for some people that can be a little bit touchy, but you are coming into this with a very, very different understanding, a deep spiritual understanding. And so I'd love to start with a question for you. There are many spiritual teachers that say that money is energy. What does that really actually mean, that money is energy? Thank you for having me, Sarah. Um, well, there's three different components to the idea that energy and money are one in the same, right? In order to really fully explain it, right, there's three kind of portions to that question. There's energy from the mental dimension, there's energy from the emotional dimension, and then there's energy in the quantum physical dimension. So let me talk about it on the mental dimension. Yes, let's okay. do just that first one in this time together, yes. Okay, wonderful. So, you know, when we're talking about the mental dimension, we're really talking about your mindset, right? The thought form that you have about any subject, in this case in particular, we're talking about money. So I want you guys to think about a $20 bill, right? Think about a $20 bill. Sarah, a $20 bill might not be a lot of money to you, right? But a $20 bill to a homeless person is a lot of money. So here you have two people having two very different thought forms about the $20 bill. So the interaction that you're having with the money, right, is not really with the physical $20 bill that's exactly the same, it's with the mental image that you carry around that $20 bill. And the mental image that you carry about the $20 bill and what it means to you in the thought form, in the mental dimension, right, is directly related to the, the self-identity. And so self-identity is just simply what you deeply feel about yourself, right? So when we're talking about our mental dimension, it is translating into our physical reality. So based on the mental image that you hold about the $20 bill, right? We can say that everybody's living their very own unique reality based on the thought forms about the subject of money in their minds. Oh, I absolutely love that. You said that there was more that you wanted to share also in terms of the idea that money is energy and the energy is money. I would love for you to go a little bit deeper on that. Sure, so when we talk about energy, we understand that everything is energy, yes. right? So the chair that we're sitting on is energy, our bodies are energies, trees, yes. and money is energy, right? And they all kind of carry this vibration. We all understand that, you know, in terms of money, it's just a neutral resource, but it's the thought form that creates the vibration that we hold around money. And as, you know, a spiritual light worker who understands energy and thinks in thought of spirit, right, the, the, the thoughts that we attach to the money create the vibration that we hold around that money. And understanding energy, right, and knowing that we're constantly attracting a similar energy to that which we hold a vibration to, right, then based on the feelings that we have that are created from the thought form, we are bringing in an equal experience around money. So if the energy that you hold about money, right, is fear, right, everything is expensive, I don't have enough, it's really hard to get ahead in life, you become an equal match to the vibration and the energy, so you are attracting evidence of a similar vibration. So you can create your very own unique reality that really allows you to live the most expressed version of who you are, right? The, the wealthy, you know, person who can actualize all of their soul's desires, 
because they're fully supported financially. But it all starts with the mental dimension and understanding how that is going to create the vibration to the money that you desire. Right. So I completely understand the idea of neuroplasticity, the yes. idea that if somebody has been in an accident, let's say, um, that they can learn to walk again, right? Yes. And so that we have this incredible ability with our brains for us to learn uh, new patterns, new thought processes. If we are working um, or have people in our life who are uh, struggling um, in their own thought processes, and that we have a group of people like that around us, does that impact who we are in our own understanding of money as energy? It has to, right? Because you know, people have always said you're the sum total of the five people that you surround yourself most. And they don't have to be physical people like you. It could be somebody who, you know, books you read, right? And you surround yourself with. Now, in terms of, you know, sometimes, it is helpful to us to set, create some separation, right? And know that if somebody's belief systems are being constantly consumed by us just by proximity, right? Our subconscious, our mind is picking up on all of those ideas. And so one of the things that is important to understand is that that person who's probably keeping you stuck is doing the best they can, yes. right? Because they're operating from, you know, the, the thought forms of what they understand, right? But sometimes that can slow you down from moving in the direction that you want to because the idea of neuroplasticity is that you are a conscious creator. You are able to create the own thought forms, right? By pointing your focus and direction on things that uplift you and expand you. And so there's all kinds of new connections that happen in your brain because of that, which is, you know, this wonderful science of neuroplasticity that will then create a new belief system and create a different result for you because of it. But yeah, I mean, when we have people in our lives, right, um, we don't necessarily have to remove them completely, but maybe we go a season, right? Yes. With, with, without them in our lives, right? As a form of boundaries and being really clear and focused on where we're trying to get to. Absolutely. I will just share with you that there came a point where I stopped having lunch every day with a certain group of people in part because I needed that time to have my own quiet space. Mm -hmm. I kept going once a week mm -hmm. because it was the day that everybody would show up for lunch, but that I began very gently, quietly pulling back. And in part is because I was working on new ideas, new concepts, mm -hmm. and I knew that I was going in the right direction, but I also knew that just as you have a brand new little tiny plant, that I needed to protect that in that process. Absolutely. When I have heard you sharing with other audiences and speaking before, uh -huh. I have heard you share how you have been able to love on other people in your life mm -hmm. um, in a way that has been able to help them. So obviously we have to start with square one. That's what I call it, square one. I have to be taking care of myself, mm -hmm. working on my own thought processes. Yes doing the work there. But if there is somebody who is close, near and dear to you, maybe you are in a business partnership together. Maybe it's somebody that you vacation with, but somebody who is speaking into your life on a pretty consistent basis. Mm -hmm. As you began moving into this direction, do you have advice for somebody who is beginning this process, but does have somebody that they are looking at going, ooh, that's a lot of energy that I'm getting. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, I love that you asked this question, Sarah. So the when we're talking about the mental dimension, right, the thought form that you have, right, is going to attract similar vibrations, right? So in my life, it was the person who's closest to me, my husband, right, would get home and you know, be frustrated over traffic, right? Makes that, sense around here. Yes, yes. yes. Uh, you know, um, pointing, you know, his focus on what a frustrating day it was. And here I was cooking dinner, having a lovely day, and I can see that the energy just shifted. I started to notice myself really kind of going along with his energy and being like, 
why do you have to see it this way? We were all perfectly happy, and why are you so frustrated? And he said, I'm not frustrated with you. I'm just frustrated. I'm just expressing myself, right? But in that, it was like an energy vampire to me. It was just sucking the energy out of me. I started to notice that I was being resp I was responding to his energy. So instead, I just made a very like clear decision that I would think really great things about him when he would come in with this energy of like frustration, right? I would just think things like, he's such a smart guy. He just hasn't figured it out. He's like expanding his frustration by pointing his thoughts at the frustration because we know that that's not how you solve problems, right? <laughs> so um, I would just think, gosh, he's so handsome. He's so smart. He's such a great guy. So funny. I would just start to focus on the things about him that were true, like facts that made me feel good. And I noticed that the energy would dissipate right away, right? The mood would change instantaneously. And then I was like, oh my God, there's something to this. I started to feel very powerful. I started to notice such clear, evident differences in people around me when I just saw them as their best selves, right? As the higher self, as the source, as the best identity version of them, then it was easier for them to recognize it in them on an energetic level. Yes. And it completely changed everything. It, it does. It works every time. It's like magic. <laughs> Thank you so much for sharing that um, personal story. Of course. And I, I have heard other people talk about how impactful that story has been for them. So I know for our listeners at Social Dynamics that there's going to be other people who are going to say, oh, Adriana did that. I can do that as well. So let's come back around, Adriana, just on this first one. You said that there were several different parts um, to money is energy, mm -hmm. but this first one you said about the mental dimension, and let's just see if I can recap this. Um, the first understanding is that your self-image is what you deeply feel about yourself, and your self-image converts the physical world into the mental energy that you are experiencing in your mind as a unique reality. And the same holds true then for money. That is true. And so a thought is the mental energy and what you think about money creates a mental energy form mm -hmm. of that money in your mind. That's right. Mm -hmm. I want to thank you so much for coming on and doing this first session. I'd like to make a series out of this and for us to come and ans uh, ask some of the other questions to have you answer them. I and would love to. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Adriana. Thanks for having me.